Hey everyone, today I want to have a look at dynamic schemas or rather at dynamic parts of your schema. Think about, for instance, the use case where you have a user and that user has some settings. These settings actually are represented by a JSON structure in your database. Often users would then go and use the any type to just get the JSON out. But what if we wanted to strongly type that part but still be able to just change a couple of properties and then our schema would just rebuild if you like our content please hit the like and subscribe button and with that let's dive right in so i already prepared here a little project and in this little project we have here our data and that is represented through this db context here it's called the account db context and it just exposes one thing an entity and that is the user if we look at our user here we can see that it has as a primary key the username and also a settings property which is where we actually store our json in that represents the settings of that user so what we want to do is expose this part of the content strongly typed we already have here a query to fetch all the users and we have a mutation to update the properties of the user so we can update the settings and we also can create this user let's just quickly run that and with that let's open this and let's go to graphql and open a new document here and then let's have a look at the schema. You can see here's our user list and you can see here's our settings and it's a string. And if we query that, then we can see that it is a JSON string at the moment. And this JSON string at the moment has a single property and that has a value DEF. Let's go back to our server and let's make that better. Okay, let's kill the process here so we can easily restart it in a second. And then let's think about how we can solve that. So there is a feature that is already in version 12, which is called a type module, but it has become much easier to use with version 13. So let's have a look at that. And this type module actually allows us to declare dynamic parts of our schema. And that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing is that we kind of create a schema for the settings that we have there in the user. And that we do with a simple JSON object. So we will put a settings.json in here. And let's say we wanna put here types in. So it could be multiple types that this schema describes. So we start here with the array and then we have an object and that essentially describes the type or the object type actually. And we give that a name and let's call the root type here user props. Let's reformat that and then we add some properties to it. Awesome. So we have the prop one, that's what we saw actually in our data, what is there. And we type it and say that's a GraphQL string. Now let's add a type module here. And for this, we add a new file and we call that the user settings type module. So let's put a simple class in here first. And this class will need the access to our schema files. So we put the field here for our file name and that is being initialized from our constructor and every type module actually needs to implement the i type module from hot chocolate so i type module and we want to implement that and then we can see that we have an event here and that's every time when our schema source actually changes we will trigger that event and the graphql engine is actually subscribed to that and when this event is raised the graphql schema is slowly phased out while the requests that are still running on it are being completed. It will be removed after all these requests are completed and a new schema is slowly phased in. So new requests will go to this new schema while old requests will be completed on the old schema. Okay, and there is a second thing here that is this message create types async. So every time we create a new schema now to which we add this type module, the schema builder will actually call this create types async and these type system members will be included in the schema build process. So to make that work, we need first to wire this types changed event here up. And what we're gonna do is we will introduce 
a file system watcher here that watches our file. And now we need to wire that up in our constructor. And with this in, every time the file changes, something happens to it, it will trigger this types changed event here. With that implemented, we can actually focus on the create types method down here. And the first thing we need here is a list of types. So we are returning here a read only collection. Let's create for that a list. Okay, with that in place, we need a read from the settings file to reflect how our schema actually looks like. So the first thing is we open our file stream here and load it into a JSON document. And then we need to do the next thing so essentially this is an array what we have in here so we want to iterate over this array and then create an object type for each entry and the next thing is we want to introduce a new type object and let me just quickly do that so what i'm doing here is actually i'm creating this object type definition and that is not the typical type object that we would use to do when we just do manual fluent types. We could in fact use fluent types here. So I could use here a new object type and then use here the delegate to create the type with the fluent API. But this actually here is the lower level configuration object that sits within the descriptor and it gives us a much more flexibility because we don't have to build up delegates here we can just use this mutable object and at some point create from it the the immutable type and we have here a method that is called create unsafe so we are essentially telling the type system that we are know what we are doing and if it explodes it's actually our fault so there are not all the type system safety checks that we would have with the fluent api but it lets us build the type much more flexible and don't be worried there are no runtime errors in regards like once the schema is successfully created, it's actually validated. And if it's not valid, we will not allow the server to start process requests. So unsafe just means that the initial validation checks that you have with your Fluent API are not done. Let's put some more things in here. We have now the object and uh, now we need to add the properties here. And for that, we need to iterate over our fields property in the JSON object. And then we're going to create an object field definition. And this field definition at the moment, you can see we have the name here and we also have the type here. So we are parsing the type. We are parsing the type reference and we are just adding that here to our field definition. Let me indent that a bit. But what we need now is a resolver. So now is a nice thing. We know that this is all JSON and hot chocolate actually has this JSON integration. And if you have a look here in the CS proj file, I already added the types.json package file from hot chocolate here. And I want to use that here with my field, but this field at the moment uses a field definition. And when I use that as an end to end feature, I'm actually using the descriptor. The nice thing is that if I have a definition, I always can make from it the descriptor. So how am I going to do that? So I'm saying that I want to have a field descriptor and I want to create this field descriptor from our field definition. But I also have to provide the context, the schema building context. And you can see that is actually provided here. The descriptor context is actually the schema building context. With this, we now have a field descriptor. And that means I cannot do all the things that I used to do as an end user of our chocolate. So I can use here field descriptor. And then I say from JSON. And this now will automatically infer a resolver that, that resolves a field value from a JSON object. Awesome. Now we just need to commit this configuration to our field definition. And we do that by saying create definition. And that will write back the changes we did in our descriptor pipeline. Awesome. Let's do the next thing. So with this, we already have all the types that we have specified in our settings JSON now in our system. So all is provided back to our schema building engine. But we want to connect that with our user type. So there are two things we could do. We could add in the types list an object type extension and extend the 
user type or we could create the fluent type for that user. We are doing the latter one now, but in a real world application where you want to have these disconnected, a type extension would actually be better. So the first thing I need to do is I need a reference to that settings object. So essentially the first object, and that's per convention now for us, the first object in here that is at the moment user props, that is our root reference. All the others would be sub references of this type if we had any. So let's go here and then we add a small type reference here. So and you can see in my type reference, I'm actually grabbing the first type from our types list and I'm making it non nullable. So I'm saying this can actually not be null. Depends on your contract. Maybe the settings could be null. Okay. And then we can go and actually create our types object. So and I, my user type actually now uses the descriptor because it's very static. I'm just going here and I'm including here the name and I'm including the settings. But for settings, I'm providing a custom resolver that actually unpacks the JSON document from the original settings field. And then I'm using the extend descriptor here to get access to the underlying definition because type references are not used with our descriptor API. This again is an underlying internal type system object that we use during schema building time. But because we are extending the type system, I'm using that just with my definition. So you can see from both sides, we can use the internal uh, more flexible API, or we can use the descriptor API and they are interchangeable. I can go from one to the other. It might look a bit more complex, but it's also more complex to implement such a use case. Okay, that's one more thing we need to do to get this running. And that is we need to go to our program CS and then we need to add our type module here. So I'm doing add type module and then I have a factory delegate here and I can use that. So I'm, I'm discarding the first parameter here. That's the service provider. So if I had other service dependency, I could use that from here. And then I'm just doing new user settings type module. And then I'm referencing our file, which sits here in the data folder. So I'm saying dot, this is our root data settings dot JSON. And with that, we can run our server. Let's go over to our browser and you can see already it reloaded and see this. It's wrong. And we can have a look at our schema reference now here. And you can see that's now of the type user props. So let's query that maybe run that. And you can see I get it now fully typed. That's awesome. Let's add another property. So I'm going back here. I'm just changing the file. The server is still running. So I'm just adding here a new prop and this prop I actually just copied over and it's again a string. It's prop two. I didn't restart. Go to our browser and let's refresh. Go to the schema reference to user props and you can see prop two. And that's amazing. I just changed the file and I changed with that the schema, but I didn't change the user type. So this is still the same. And that's what I meant with we are having dynamic schema parts. So section of our graph are now dynamic. So it's very easy to get this dynamic schema in, but there is a lot more work to do to make it really robust and ensure that you don't break your runtime. But I hope that gave you an idea how to get started with that and how you can push your chocolate also to go after these niche use cases. Please help us grow our project by starring us on GitHub. And if you like this episode, please hit the like button below the video. And with this, I'm out.